Hello and welcome to the fourth video in my part 3 Java MTA course. In this video we're going to be talking about all the string methods that you need to know for the MTA exam. As always we're going to start with the key points and then I'm going to give you some questions to cement that information. What you should already know is you should be aware of what a reference type is. The string will probably be the most important reference type for the exam. So if you're unaware about what this is, please check out my video reference types and it will be located in the playlist. Do remember that a string is an object that we'll create. Once we've created it, we can then use a number of methods um, to do a number of different things. What you need to do is you need to be able to be explain what all these methods do, do and how you use them in Java. The first method, the concatenate method, again, if you want to use it, it combines two strings together. So if you have the original string here within text one, if you add concat, you can then add the string within the brackets to your original variable. So in this case, it returns a string, and so the output would be hello, goodbye. The contain, this allows us to check whether the string in the brackets is within the variable. So for example, the HEL is contained within the text1 variable, and so it returns a Boolean true. If it doesn't, it returns a false. Equals, this is probably one of the more important methods that you need to know, because what will this do it was, it, is it will compare two strings or compare a, a string uh, a variable string with another variable string. So in the previous video we saw how sometimes using that double equals isn't a good way of checking if one string equals another string. And so the equals method allows us to check if one string equals another string in a much more efficient way. So again if we look here we're saying if this text one equals the string in there, it will return true, otherwise it will return false. Again, you can also do this method with the ignore case, and this does the same thing, except for it doesn't pay attention whether it's uppercase or lowercase. Again, the length method, this returns an int, and it tells you how many characters are in that text or in that variable. So if we look here, our hello text, or our hello variable, has five characters. So the total length of that would be five. This will be very useful for when you're doing things like loops. So again, another important one for the MTA exam. And the last thing, within the string method, you can also return one character. The important thing about this method is that you have to be aware that this is a zero index system. So the first one index would be 0, then 1, then 2. So if we look here, we have 1 down there, and so the output would be E. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be including this table in the description below, and hopefully you can use this information to answer the following questions. So pause the video now and see if you can answer the questions. So hopefully you've paused the video, let's go through them and answer them. So if you were going to check if two strings were exactly the same, which method you would use? Well, you would use that equals method to check if both of them are the exact same string. Number two, what data type is returned for length? Well, the data type that is returned is an int because it'll tell you the number of the size of that variable. So if you wanted to check if there was a postcode address or a zip code um, as part of RG, what method would you use? Well, you would use contain. So you're going to be checking if the string that you're checking contains the RG in it. And if it does, it's true, otherwise it's false. And the last one, if you wanted to store the first value of a string um, in a variable, which method would you use? Well, you would use in that char at method, and then you would put zero as it would be the first letter in that variable. In the exam, sometimes you'll be given a bit of code and you'll have to show what the output is. So hopefully you can be able to stop the video and answer these questions.
So hopefully you've paused the video. Let's go through the answers. So for the first one, if we look on line nine, and if we printed a uh, text two, what will be the output? Well, we're combining this hello and goodbye. So again, we'll be saying the output would be hello space goodbye. Number two, what would be outputted if I print answer one on line 10? So again here, uh, if we have text one and then it contains good, so if this and this, um, if good is within hello in any way, then it would be true. Otherwise, it would be false. So there is no good within hello. So if you print out answer one, it would result in it being false. Number three, in number 11, if you outputted answer two, what would you do? So again, we're checking, um, we're checking to X2 and we're saying does text two equal hello goodbye? Um, if you remember text two is a concatenation between text one and goodbye. So it would be hello goodbye. However, if we look here, the H is a lowercase and the H here is an uppercase. So that would result in false. If this was the method e equals ignore case, then the result would be true. But because it's only equals, answer two would be false. And the last one, what be outputted if I printed answer a three on line 12? So remember the returning value of length method is an integer and it's saying, what is the length of text one? Well, got one, two, three, four, five. So there's five characters there. So the length is five. So the printing value in answer three is five. So we're coming to the end of the video. Before you go, have a try at checking your understanding. If you're able to name all of the string methods that we talked about today, you have a, that's a good understanding. If you can not only name them, but explain what each does, that's better. And if you can explain what each does and also list what is returned from each other, then I think you have a great understanding of the, the first part of the string methods and you can move on to the, uh, the second video about strings. If you found this video useful, please like. And if you're interested in um, getting a few mock exams for the MTA exam, please subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.